I'm Christopher Lee. In the days of the Spanish Inquisition, the torture chair didn't exactly help one's spine, but it certainly straightened out one's thinking. Dr. Abarbanel, in the story The Torture of Hope by Villa de Lille Adam, found that the torture chair was the least of the tribulations prescribed for him by the Grand Inquisitor. Two thumb screws before meals or instead of them, a flail to aid circulation, a hot iron to get rid of the chill, and of course, bread and water to reduce that spare tire. Oh yes, they had thought of everything. But Dr. Abarbanel had not yet been cured. He still had one delusion left, the possibility of escape. Hope was his only medicine. Prisoner before the court, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, your eminence. I am a doctor. My son, the court will decide what you are from the evidence we hear. You are charged that you did profane the bodies of the dead by preventing their just and lawful burial. And further, you are charged that you did dismember these bodies, cutting their limbs apart and disemboweling their corpses. Do you plead guilty to these charges? What I have done, I have done as a doctor in my desire to cure. To be able to cure, I must know. I must know how a disease is caused. It is because no man can be cured by guesswork that my researches have been to try and find the answers I must have. And the necessity of those answers to find the proof led to my using the bodies of those dead of the diseases I fought. And yet those who sought knowledge before you have never used the bodies of the dead. The greatest name in medicine Used animals only, Claudius Scalenus. He didn't find it necessary to use the bodies of the dead. That was over 12 centuries ago or more. As you say. But you were born at this time. Yes, in a time of increasing knowledge when a man must develop his proper talent. By developing knowledge and skill. Above all, I've always worked for that. Claudius Scalenus thought by vivisection that his findings with animals were analogous to all of the human diseases. He was wrong. 
So many hopeless animal complaints are virtually non-existent in human form. No issue interested me more than this. I have found his error through the most careful comparison between the corpses of animals and those of human beings. Ah, then you admit that. Admit your guilt in this benighted work of profaning the dead. Oh, how could I profane I the dead? I might ask the same question of you. If you speak of profaning the dead, do I profane the living when I operate on them? I am a doctor, not a grave robber. Lower your voice. My son, where do you come from? From Aragon, Your Eminence. Beautiful country. Beautiful, Your Eminence, beautiful. And the people? They're splendid, warm, kind, full of love. And helping these people is your mission in life? So I hope, for that was I born. Suddenly I'm aware of loving them. You love them. So is one soul in mortal danger through love. And so, would you tell me what you have learned from your experiments, my son? That man and animals are not the same. The first thing I needed was some proof that my theories had a basis in truth. Most important of all, I believed I had to start from the beginning by a whole new set of rules. My initial object was the lungs. I found that they were like a huge open tree, the branches spreading the oxygen absorbed through the mouth. But the amazing thing was four layers of skin protecting all of the delicate air channels, feeding oxygen to the bloodstream. Proceed. Proceed. Then, I wanted to follow the bloodstream. I wanted to help, and to help meant I had to know what to do. And that meant I had to find out all I could about the heart. I found the heart is something like a big gourd, out of which it provides the body its blood. And that blood is made pure by a process of filtering. A filter that acts as our chief guardian, pumping and purifying it, enabling us to continue living. And so we live because of our heart. But if it goes wrong, time has caught up with us and we die. The heart would seem to be the fountain of living. Or so you would seem to say. Say you the same of the human soul. You ask me that of which I am ignorant. I'm a doctor, that's all. I can't form an opinion of something that's impossible for me to grasp. Satan speaks the words you say. Our Lord God that preserves us free you from what you say. You explain the heart. It is our soul that is our heart. And instead of showing concern about your eternal life, you have passed your time seeking self-glory. And most wickedly, for have you not disturbed the dead at rest, committing foul and miserable sacrileges against them? Confess these sins. Confess this before it is too late. You'll be forgiven. Confess it. I'm a doctor. I know nothing beyond that. Speak. Answer. By order of His Holiness the Pontiff, Pope John, failure to respond to question of the Holy Inquisition will call for the use of torture. You have heard. Now, now is the time to confess your sins. We want to spare you. You have your fate in your own hands, whether to live or die. What I've lived for needs no defense. That is my last word. I have reasoned with the prisoner. According to the laws of the Holy Court of Inquisition laid down by His Holiness. And for the prisoner's salvation, let him be put now to the torture.
so shall it be done. Peace, my son. Why do you hide your face? Look at me, my son. You need not be afraid to look at me. Your purification ends for the proper glory of God. My son, for my sins I repent humbly. Please help me by absolving me for what I have done. Forgive me if I had to hurt you. Say that the pain my heart holds will soon disappear through your forgiveness. It is that for me the life after death is all important. The Elsipop's forces of evil hold special powers. Those that could destroy us in our ceaseless struggle of power, saving one's own soul is important, but the more necessary is the saving of another man's soul. Someone just like you were before we summoned you to us. Forget these moments of anguish now. It's almost at an end. This is your final night in this world of transient shadow. Remove his chains. face the Camadero, the fire of salvation, tomorrow morning. You know, it burns for several hours before death takes you, and so you will be able to come to the Lord in fellowship. That is the value of a slow death, by giving you the opportunity to repent, and by beseeching for absolution as the fire burns away your transgressions, so shall you be saved. Put your faith blindly in the Lord's name, for he watches above us, so we shall find him merciful in forgiving us all our sins. Beyond this life there is a heaven waiting for the penitent, my son. Go with God. Have faith in his forgiveness.
Forgive me for my part, that I caused you pain for your soul's sake, so that the devil's work should be undone. Pardon for my sins and absolve me. Thank you. 
Satan has achieved over some of our penitents. That young woman from Cadiz has been tortured for over three weeks and still refuses to confess for her soul's salvation. You must persevere, brother, persevere. I do, with God's help, but it is very disappointing. And the danger is, particularly with women, that in one's zealousness one will cause them to die, still in a state of sin, and their damnation could be my fault. You must keep a stout heart and trust in God. He will know what to strive for. I remember what have disappointed me. Why should you be tempted to escape to this world? Just when your God awaits you in the next. Great, but who is rich enough to live without it? Mm -hmm. 